These creepy true crime cases are dark, disturbing, and remain a real mystery to this day. By spreading awareness, hopefully the true stories behind these unsolved crime cases can be solved by investigators much later. Number 5 The true crime story of Christine Flahive began more than 25 years ago. The 42-year-old from South Florida worked in Punta Gorda as a cocktail waitress and was known to frequent a number of local bars and restaurants in the city's small downtown. She was particularly fond of JD's Lounge, which attracted a criminal biker clientele. On the afternoon of January 4, 1995, Christine told her family that she had some bills to pay in downtown Punta Gorda and headed out on her bicycle. After that, she headed to JD's and then to a mobile home on Rollins Street. When she failed to return home the following day, her father reported her as a missing person. Case investigators were able to determine that Christine had visited JD's, but then the trail went cold. She's believed to have possibly visited someone's home, but this information is unconfirmed. For years, suspicion centered around a potential criminal suspect by the name of Philip Barr, who was convicted in 2015 for taking the life of a young woman in Punta Gorda in 2001. A search of his former home turned up no leads in Christine's unsolved crime case. As the story goes, in 2019, police uncovered a new lead. A local resident named Jonathan Charles Payne had worked in construction in the 1990s and was known by investigators to visit several of Christine's favorite bars. Jonathan passed away in 2011. By then, police said that a confidential informant had recently come forward with reliable information implicating him. Based on this anonymous tip, Police investigators began to search a heavily wooded area east of Rollins Street where Christine was said to have visited the night that she vanished. Investigators confirmed that Jonathan had ties to Rollins Street as well. However, they did not specify what evidence they were hoping to find at the potential crime scene. They did confirm that due to his profession, Jonathan Payne had access to construction machinery in the 1990s. They are considering criminal theories that he may have used it to bury Christine's body. After investigating the Rollins Street area, police sent several items to a lab for forensic testing, but the samples were too degraded to collect any useful DNA testing results. Christine's unsolved crime case remains open on the Charlotte County Sheriff's Office website, and they're asking people to contact 941-575-5361. In particular, they encourage anyone who knew Jonathan Payne or frequented downtown Punta Gorda around January of 1995 to reach out with any missing info. They also released a plea for the person who submitted the 2019 anonymous tip to reach out however they can. Case detectives believe this person may have valuable information that they don't know is crucial to the ongoing investigation. Number 4 on February 1st, 1997, Anna Marie Zirkel reportedly walked away from her two children, leaving them in the care of her father's cousin, Troy Austin. Troy told crime detectives he watched her walk away from their home, where he lived with Anna, her two toddler sons, and the boy's father, Darren Williams. She was never found. Authorities suspected foul play in Anna's case. Friends and family were adamant that she would never just abandon her children. In addition, she left behind her ID and personal items, as well as an uncashed check for $388, which is worth about $700 today. If she was planning to start a new life, investigators reason, then this was a significant sum to leave behind. Anna was just 22 when she went missing. She grew up in Ohio. Her father passed away when she was young, and she spent a significant amount of time in foster care. After she was adopted and graduated high school, Anna moved in with her boyfriend, Darren. They had two kids, and in 1997, they moved to Columbus, Ohio, about 170 miles away. Darren's cousin, Troy, moved in with them. The true story of their crime would unfold February 1st of 1997. Darren had gone back to his and Anna's hometown to visit some old friends, leaving Anna and Troy with the two children. 
Troy claims this is when Anna gave him money to purchase bus tickets and sent the kids back to their hometown. After she broke up with him, Troy traveled with the kids to Warren, Ohio to meet Darren. Six days later, Anna's neighbor called the Columbus, Ohio police and filed a missing person report. The neighbor reportedly knew that Anna had reportedly left her children behind and thought something was unusual about this story. Anna's unsolved case leaves a lot of details open for speculation by the true crime community. Darren and Troy were possibly cleared of all criminal suspicion, though neither has spoken to the media or made a public statement. Anna's children, who are now young adults, were raised by Darren's parents in his hometown of Warren. In October of 2010, the Columbus, Ohio Police Cold Case Squad received a tip from the U.S. Marshals Service that led them to a search of a home in Ashtabula County, Ohio. However, an extensive multi-day search with police canines turned up no evidence. Anna's unsolved case remains open, and foul play is suspected. Police told reporters in 2010 that there were no definite suspects and they welcome fresh information. Anyone with information about Anna is asked to contact the Columbus Cold Case Squad at 614-645-4860 or the Ashtabula County Sheriff's Department at 440-576-0055. Number 3 20-year-old Richard Halliday was adopted from Poland at the age of five and spent most of his childhood on a base in Germany. Growing up in a military family, it was his goal to join the army and pay his way through college. In April of 2018, he enlisted, but just over a year later, according to his parents, he had started to talk about leaving the service. His parents, unsure of what had happened to him, encouraged him to finish his service. On July 23, 2020, Richard was accounted for in his barracks at Fort Bliss, a U.S. Army post in Texas. He was not seen after and was classified as missing for duty as early as the following day. Strangely, his family was not told that their son was absent without official leave for more than 36 days. His family is particularly skeptical of the Army's role in his disappearance. In the spring of 2020, he was disciplined for reportedly going into Mexico. His family alleged that Richard did not actually cross the border into Mexico, but was rather going for a drive around the nearby town of El Paso. Richard's family believes that he was unfairly punished for joyriding during the worldwide lockdowns in early 2020. According to their story, the military has acknowledged a failure to inform his family of his disappearance in a timely manner. The U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Division reports that its search efforts to date have included 240 interviews, 70 subpoenas, and countless hours of examination of digital and physical evidence. In addition to a fundraising page on Give, Send, Go, Richard's family is conducting their own investigation and have set up a Find Richard Halliday hotline at 941-677-0060. His mother also goes live on Facebook almost daily on the page Find Richard Halliday to share updates and raise awareness about the unsolved case. Anyone with missing information on the strange disappearance of Richard Halliday is asked to call the Fort Bliss CID office at 915-568-1700, the Fort Bliss Military Police at 915-744-1237. There is a $125,000 reward for information that can get this unsolved case solved years later. Number 2 On August 19, 2003, Mary Lou Combs had a fight with her mother, whom she lived with in Flagler County, Florida. The 41-year-old mother of three drove off in her red 1996 Plymouth Neon sedan to reportedly calm down. For a few days, Mary Lou didn't return home, but it wasn't until she missed her daughter Natasha's 12th birthday that her family started to worry. Mary Lou was excited for the birthday party planned for Natasha, who was collecting porcelain dolls. A few days before her birthday, Mary Lou let her have a sneak peek at her present, a brand new doll for her collection. This was the last time the young girl would see her mother. Before reporting her missing, 
Mary Lou's sister-in-law checked with her job at the local Food Lion supermarket. Mary Lou had been absent from work, and strangest of all, her manager had her paycheck ready to pick up. The family began to really wonder what had happened to her, for Mary Lou never missed a paycheck. Her mother and sister-in-law reported Mary Lou as a missing person to the Flagler County Sheriff's Office, but crime investigators were unable to solve the mystery. Years later, Natasha, now an adult, told reporters in 2021 a creepy story. Her grandmother, Mary Lou's mother, woke up early one morning when she was a child to tell her a dark secret. There were stories that Mary Lou passed away after binging at a house party, and that her body was relocated somewhere on the property near the Sewanee River. Why this rumor was not pursued by criminal investigators in 2003 remains unclear. However, in 2021, detectives confirmed that they were aware of the theory, and that a search on foot and by air had yielded no crime scene evidence. They've not been able to verify the true source or the veracity of the strange rumor. For their part, Mary Lou's adult children, including Natasha, believe that their mother has since passed away. However, they continue to hope for updates in her potential crime case, which remains open. The Flagler County Sheriff's Office is asking anyone with information about Mary Lou Combs' 2003 disappearance to contact them at 386-437-4116. Number 1. Before he went missing, William Charles Stanbury Sr., known to many as Chuck, had once played bass all over the country with the Temptations. On the evening of December 7, 2006, around 7.15 p.m., the 72-year-old was at a friend's house in his hometown of East Cleveland, Ohio, when he called his girlfriend Betty to let her know that he was coming over soon, though he never made it. Chuck drove a 2001 Hunter Green Ford Focus, which went missing with him. Chuck may have been seen at a Shell gas station later that night, but the sighting of the missing person was unconfirmed. After that, both he and his car vanished. When Betty called his adult children to let them know he had failed to turn up, they quickly reported the mystery case for police to solve. There was some speculation that he might have been voluntarily missing. But since Chuck had plans to marry Betty, played in a band, and he spoke regularly with his friends and family, criminal investigators found this theory unlikely. In the years since he mysteriously vanished, Chuck was found missing from the funerals of his sister, brother, and grandson, which his family believes is unlikely. They suspect that something happened to him, though exactly what they cannot explain. In 2009, Chuck's story was profiled on local television as a famous unsolved cold case. A private investigator, Pete Dimopoulos, was especially concerned by what he saw at the East Cleveland Police Department's mishandling of the case. Moved by the true story, he volunteered his services to Willie, Chuck's son. In 2013, he brought to attention that the one-page record of Chuck's disappearance listed little more than a date and time. After more investigation, Pete came to believe that the famous musician's life had been ended inside his own home by someone who knew him well. According to a 2014 report, the home was demolished along with most of the crime scene evidence, but bank records showed that someone emptied Chuck's bank account, and the signatures don't seem to match up. In addition, Pete told press in 2016 that he was able to access cell phone records which confirmed Chuck's phone continued to ping in the vicinity of his house for two days after he supposedly vanished, and then mysteriously kept pinging a tower in the vicinity of the Cleveland junkyard. East Cleveland police investigators confirmed that the junk end salvage yard where Chuck's phone pinged is an area of interest in his unsolved case. As recently as 2014, their criminal investigation may have revealed that a member of law enforcement witnessed the 2001 Ford being destroyed. The agent was undercover at the time investigating a car theft ring, and was unaware of the importance of the car. Chuck's famous missing person case remains open, and his children, Willie and Carla, continue to search for him. In 2013, they held a celebration of life for their father with Willie telling reporters that he couldn't call it a memorial until he got closure. 
Anyone with any information regarding Chuck's case should call criminal investigators at East Cleveland Police Department at 216-451-1234. His children also run a Facebook page where they share information regularly on Chuck's unsolved case, as well as other mysterious missing person cases. The name is Missing Willie C. Standberry Sr. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.